שלום, מי הוא זה? אה, פייבי היפו, למה אתה מפריע לי? אני מנמנמת עכשיו. אמא, אני תקוע באילן. אה, לקרוץ למטה, מלאכי. אני אוהבת אותך. שלום. So annoying when baby hippo calls when I'm taking a nap. אמא! All right, welcome to our scene on hypokalemia, represented by this hippo over here, who's calling Ima. Ima is mother in Hebrew. Hippo calling Ima for hypokalemia. In this video, we're going to talk about the definition of hypokalemia, causes of hypokalemia, and then we're going to talk about symptoms seen in a patient with hypokalemia. So hypokalemia, as the name suggests, means lower than normal potassium levels in the blood. And that's represented over here by the hippo in this tree with the bananas that all fell off and it no longer has anything to eat. So bananas are high in potassium and the fact that they're going down reminds us of hypokalemia. And specifically, hypokalemia is generally when the blood values of potassium are lower than 3.5 milli equivalents per liter. For us to understand the causes of hypokalemia, we have to understand one thing. And that's that the body wants to maintain a normal balance of potassium inside and outside the cell. Normally, potassium inside the cell is at about 150 milli equivalents per liter, whereas on the outside, it's usually at 4.5. Normally, when a person eats during the day, let's say, they ingest tons of potassium, so the body has to have a way to get rid of this potassium. External balance of potassium is largely taken care of by the kidneys. Excess potassium is secreted into the renal tubular and excreted into the urine. So, in order for there to be little potassium in the blood, or hypokalemia, there are two possibilities. The first is an external balance shift most often caused by an increase of potassium excretion in the kidneys, which lowers the level of potassium in the blood. And the second is an internal balance shift where potassium moves into cells from the interstitium and the blood. This kidney on the island over here is to remind us that potassium balance in the body is mainly maintained by the kidney. One potential cause of internal potassium balance shift is having excess insulin. And that's why we have these insects over here. These insects that are jumping up are going to remind us of the excess insulin. And this is because insulin increased the activity of the sodium potassium pump, which pulls potassium into cells. In rare cases, insulin overdose can cause enough potassium uptake into cells to cause a hypokalemia. And that's represented by these insects. Another cause of an internal potassium balance shift could be an alkalosis, represented by this base, you know, the baseball base that these insects are jumping on top of. The base, alkalosis, a high pH. This is when the blood becomes too alkaline. So what happens is that the body can decrease blood pH by moving hydrogen ions out of cells and into the blood. To accomplish this though, cells use a complex series of multiple ion channels, exchangers and pumps, to exchange hydrogen ions for potassium ions across the cell membrane. So hydrogen ions leave the cells and potassium ions enter the cells and leave the blood, resulting in hypokalemia because now there's less potassium in the blood. Just as a side point, a respiratory alkalosis would not generally lead to a hypokalemia because a respiratory alkalosis is when there's low carbon dioxide levels in the blood. So potassium levels aren't going to be affected because carbon dioxide is lipid soluble and freely moves into and out of cells without being exchanged for potassium. Therefore, there's going to be no hypokalemia. Okay, let's move on to this beautiful roll over here that these insects are jumping on. They're top, jumping on top of a beautiful roll, a beautiful roll for albuterol and other beta-2 agonists. Beta-2 adrenergic receptors stimulate the sodium potassium pump, which pulls potassium from the blood into the cells. So this beautiful role, a beautiful role for albuterol. And we can remember that if beta-2 agonists will lead to a hypokalemia, alpha blockers will also lead to a hypokalemia. That's because alpha receptors cause a shift of potassium out of cells through the calcium-dependent potassium channels. So if we block alpha, it will lead to a hypokalemia. One cause of hypokalemia is simply not taking in enough food. For example, a woman who's anorexic can get hypokalemia. That's represented by this woman over here on this island who's very skinny. We'd also notice that she's vomiting. Vomiting is also a cause of hypokalemia, but the upper GI tract usually only secretes a small amount of potassium, so, that, so direct losses through vomiting is usually minimal. And we also notice that she's sweating. A very small amount of potassium is lost in sweat, which could also be relevant for individuals who exercise a lot in a hot climate. Take a look behind her. Sorry about this, but the diarrhea is going to remind us that chronic diarrhea can also lead to hypokalemia, as well as laxative abuse, often used by people with eating disorders. Take a look behind this kidney over here. 
Did you notice this stone on the island with Waldo on it? The Waldo stone or the Aldo stone for aldosterone? In situations where somebody produces too much aldosterone, like primary hyperaldosteronism, then there's more potassium secretion by the principal cells, meaning more gets excreted, and that means less potassium is retained, causing hypokalemia. Also, commonly used diuretics, like loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics, represented by this loop over here, loop that's tie-dyed, loop for loop diuretics, and tie-dye for thiazide diuretics, also increase potassium secretion and lead to hypokalemia. Take a look at this sign over here. It says that there's nothing exciting on this island. Now, you and me both know there's a lot of things that are exciting on this island. But the nothing exciting sign over here is going to help us remember the decreased excitability. Meaning, with low potassium in the blood, the membrane potential can hyperpolarize or become more negative. This means that the muscle cells become less reactive to stimuli. That's what nothing exciting is going to remind us of. They decrease excitability. So diminished contractions of smooth muscle, for example, can lead to constipation. Diminished skeletal muscle contraction can lead to muscle weakness, cramps, and flaccid paralysis. That's what these flasks over here are going to remind us of, the flaccid paralysis, which tends to begin in the lower extremities and ascends upward. Respiratory muscles may also be affected, which leads to a respiratory depression. And finally, hypokalemia can affect cardiac muscle contractions, which lead to cardiac arrhythmias as well as cardiac arrest, represented by this heart here that's exploding. We're going to end off this scene just by making mention of a, few, of a few more high yield points. That's that hypokalemia is diagnosed based on the presence of low levels of potassium in the blood, generally below 3.5 mL equivalents per liter. It's also important to get an electrocardiogram, which typically shows a prolonged QT interval. I like to think that this hippo is a big cutie over here. He's a big cutie to remind us of the prolonged QT interval, as well as the appearance of a U wave and atrial or ventricular tachyarrhythmias. In patients with severe hypokalemia, the main goal of treatment is to normalize potassium levels. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on hypokalemia. Stay tuned for our next video. Please subscribe to the channel and take care.